Hi guys, it's Dakota. Hope everybody's doing well. So, you have a different uh, view of the witch cottage. Um, <laughs> over here is my workbench. And that's where I'm going to be uh, showing you today's little thing that I'm making, which is floor wash. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And then usually there's the doors that I always talk about. And then over there is where I sit. Yeah. So I get to um, look out the windows and you see my little skylight area up here. But um, I put the camera over here because I, as always, I had started the video and it... Um, I, I kept having to come over here, so I thought it would just be easier. I'm just going to come over here, and um, and so be it. All right. So today we're going to talk about floor washes and how I use them and why. And I'm also going to tell you the difference for me. Now, this is just me. This is just me. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the difference for me, how, how I think cleaning and cleansing are two different things so i clean my house weekly and sometimes i have to sweep my floors two or three times a week because of my dog and the cat because they shed so much right so i clean i sweep i vacuum i dust um you know i clean and about quarterly I do a cleansing. So for me, um, you know, well, first let me say this. So I get a lot of people that come into the store and they are wanting something to, I've got this negative energy going on in my house and there's something evil going on or uh, it's chaos and all of that. Well, um, that, and, and, and so they want, sage or smudge or you know they want something to to clean that out with for me um i don't have that energy here i mean i don't know i don't know if it's just because um i you know i work hard on keeping everything uh positive and clean and you know i think it's just a combination of all the witchy stuff that i do and my house is um you know it's very very witchy <laughs> um it isn't supposed to be, but it just turns out to be that way. And um, I have a um, a patient uh, Capric Capricorn husband who he just, hey, as long as he's got his space and I don't talk to him too much about spiritual stuff and he gets to eat, that's all he cares about. So I'm pretty lucky in that respect. But um, yeah, so I only cleanse my house about quarterly cleansing for me is more about a spiritual uh feeling a spiritual cleanse and and again i just want to make sure that you know like i like i said i do it quarterly i don't have that negative, that uh, energy, and the, uh, I don't have that going on in my house, and so that's a really cool thing, and and i you know that's great, but even still, sometimes it's kind of like when you do a spring cleaning, you know, you just want to open the windows and open the doors and let that fresh air circulate and just kind of get the staleness of winter being having everything closed up for the for the winter it's it's sort of that way um you know and it might be because there is so much spiritual stuff going on that after a while the uh residual energy uh is just sort of there now it's not negative and it's not chaotic and it's not dysfunctional it's not any of that but I just feel like sometimes it has to be um, fre just freshened. It has to be freshened up, like hanging your clothes on the on the clothesline outside after you wash it, right? So that's kind of what it is. And I do that about quarterly. I do it about quarterly. So 
Um, and what that would mean for me is I take, I, I always start with my furniture first, my cabinets. So that means taking, like taking everything off so that you can have a clean surface, cleaning it, which would be dusting it, cleaning it, and then doing the cleansing that I would do. And it is the same thing with the floor. So the floor I would sweep, I would make sure that I've gotten underneath any chairs, cabinets, tables. Um, I get a lot of, uh, there's just, between my dog and my cat, my dog, you know, he has an undercoat. And so he just sheds all the time, first of all. But in the summer, it's just, I mean, he'll, he'll get up and there's like a whole dog laying on the floor. Um, so it's really, really bad. And um, so first I clean I, all the floors and everything. I get them clean. And then I do the wash. I do the cleansing. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to go over and, and show you how I make it and talk a little bit more about how I do it and the whys. Um, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, um, oh, and one thing I did want to mention too, was that, um, you know, there, there are some people that cannot, uh, practice at home, um, for whatever, whatever reason, and, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine, I mean, we all understand that, but cleaning your house is something that has to be done. And if you can add a little magic to that without anybody knowing, then even better, right? Um, and so there, there are hundreds of herbs out there that you can use and different oils that you can use that makes the house smell really good. So, and you know, so if someone said, hmm, what, you know, what's that smell? It smells different in here. Oh, I love the smell of lemon or I love the smell of orange or you know roses whatever it is that you've used and and they they don't know you know they they just don't know so it's a way of kind of using your your um, magic without bringing out all the witch tools and stuff so okay um let me see I want to make sure that that's everything for now if it isn't I'll talk to you when I'm over there okay I'm going to put you on pause and we're going to get over there all right Okay, so here we are. This is a little uh, camp cook stove. It's what I have here in the cottage um, because obviously I don't have a stove in here. And so this is what I use. This is a cast iron uh, pot. And this is what I use indoors when I need to make something that can, you know, that is for magical purposes. Um, I do like to use my smaller cauldron that I use for uh, potions and stuff like this, like the floor washes, etc. But it's not always convenient to use my cauldron, so I will um, use the cast iron and, you know, just right on the stove. But I don't use my kitchen pots because um, this has been this little pot here has been consecrated for magical purposes and i'm not going to use it for mundane cooking okay all right so let me grab my notes because i don't want to miss anything um all right so again i am making i'm good this is heating up and so yeah so while that's heating we're going to start my stuff ready here. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, the first thing that you want to do is you want to you want to know what your intention is. What are you making your floor wash for? Today I decided that I'm going to go ahead and show you a protection uh, a protection floor wash because so many people ask for that. 
So I'm going to make this and I'm actually gifting this to somebody who has asked for one of my washes, all right? Um, I've changed the ingredients just a little bit uh, so that it's different from my very own, even though I don't, I, I have a recipe for protection, but I never, I, I promise you, I have never used it um, for myself. So, um, so this is going to be for somebody else, all right? Okay, so one of the things that I'm going to, what you're going to do is you're going to add your herbs into your pot because you want to bring it to a simmer. You want it to simmer. You want all the oils and everything to extract from the herbs. Those are the properties. That's what you're going to use. So the first thing that you're going to do is figure out, like I said, your, your intention. Your intention could be for um, prosperity or for love or for healing. Um, you know, and you could just say, I just want a good energy or I want a house blessing. It could be anything that you want. One of the, the thing about the floor wash is much like and this and, and there are people that use a floor wash once a week when they do their house cleaning, they do their cleansing with their floor wash. And one of the reasons I don't want that to start boiling before we are done here. Um, one of the reasons is because if you think about it, if you have a lot of people in and out of your home on a daily basis, you could sage your home today and tonight someone could come over and just be a, have a really foul, ugly, uh, energy flowing about them. Maybe something happened and they're just angry and they're very negative. They're very toxic. And here you've just done this saging. Well, the saging is only going to last um, so long. So that's why we use the floor wash. The floor wash, you know, it's good for until your next cleansing. So in the case of somebody who has a lot of dysfunction and chaos in their home, then maybe you do want to do a floor wash, a floor cleansing once a week as well. There's, there's no rule on how often you need to do it. Um, okay, so for me, you can see, I mean, once a quarter is, is plenty for me. I, there's just no, I have no reason to do it more often than that. So you can do it as often as you want. All right, um, let's see. So the first thing that, okay, I know, let me share this with you. I use this as my uh, La Bamba, let's see if you can see it, La Bamba. This is what I use as a general cleanser, or not even cleanser, as a general cleaner. I put um, about a cup of it, a quarter cup, a cup into my spray bottle uh, of water. And that's what I use like daily, like after you cook a meal and you're cleaning your kitchen counters or you're cleaning your sinks, um, that's what I use. So I use that to clean everything. So, you know, to clean the bathroom ca uh, counter to, I spritz it into the commode. Um, and uh, when you dilute it, it, it has a, um, a fresh smell to it, I guess. Um, but it's, uh, it doesn't say that it's, uh, uh, it's just a multi-purpose cleaner. That's what it says, multi-purpose cleaner. It doesn't talk about any, you know, getting rid of any evil spirits or whatever. Um, but it, uh, it's just really good for, it fights odors and bacteria. So I, I really enjoy using that, um, you know, especially now <laughs> with the COVID and stuff going on. But um, I've, I've used it for years and I really, really like it. So that's just a general cleanser. So you are cleaner. So you, you could, if you wanted, 
um, you could add some of this to your floor wash if you liked that. But um, I tend to use this selection that I have over here. All right. Uh, well, <laughs> this is what was in my, my boss, uh, my book of shadows for protection because again I'm making this for somebody who asked me and I said sure so I'm making it for them all right so the amount of water I've put in here I'm going to when I get ready to finish this it's going to go into a pint jar this is just a pint I'm going to put it in there and so I just filled this with a little more than a pint uh, of water because it's going to evaporate all right so uh, I wanted to have enough for them when it's done okay let me I'm gonna have to stand up it's hard for me to stand up and see the computer at the same time so let's see how this is doing it's almost ready okay so the first thing I'm going to put in there is I'm going to put in some eucalyptus all right eucalyptus not only does it have that antibacterial uh, sort of uh, minty vix vapory rub kind of smell to it but it is really really good for purification so we do want to purify when we cleanse we want to make sure that our home is uh, purified the energy is purified and I'm using three pinches because you know me I use threes just using a pinch I use my fingers I don't measure if I don't feel like it's enough I add more so that is eucalyptus and you can, uh, in some states, there are eucalyptus trees. I had one growing here. It did not do well here. I don't know if it's too wet here in North Carolina, but it didn't do well because I wanted to use fresh uh, eucalyptus. I almost bought one again this year, but I never, I, I just didn't get the area cleaned out in time, so I passed on it. All right, so then the next thing I'm going to use is um, this is uh, blessed or blessed uh, thistle blessed thistle and it is really good also for for purification but it's also really good if you think that someone has put you know something to you like you know a curse or a hex or you know they've they've sent bad energy uh, your way and, and you know that for a fact um, it's really good for removing that type of energy so I'm putting in the blessed thistle the blessed thistle so this is what's good for getting rid of it is good for purification but it is also good for removing you know something that you think someone has put towards you whether it's a hex or a curse or you know a jinx or whatever uh, one of the things that i don't have here um, but i have used this so i kind of fibbed to you in the beginning when i talked about the negative uh, energy and stuff so um one of the things that I have used, I don't have it out here today, but it is um, Slippery Elm. That is great to for stop gossiping. Um, I use it in my shut up spells, um, my be quiet spells, my stop talking, stop gossiping um, spells. And so if you felt like, you know, there was that going on, you could add some of that as well. All right. The other thing that I'm going to use is, um, as you know, if, if there is some kind of negative energy, if there's some kind of chaos going on, 
Well, then that means there's an obstacle that needs to be removed. You got it. I'm using chicory root. Um, I'm using three pinches of chicory root because it's, it's a road opener. It's a remover of obstacles. And it's, it's chicory root. Yes, you can grow chicory root as well. So I'm adding that. I'm just kind of stirring this now. I wanted to kind of, I have to watch this cooker. Um, I don't want it to start like rapidly boil and then, you know, whatever. Um, okay, so then the next thing. All right, this is um, St. John's wort. St. John's wort. And it is also an excellent herb that sort of wards like it, it, it's really good to put in um like mojo bags or grigri bags for warding um it wards off the bad energy or if you think you you know if you think that you've got actual spirit in there that is not serving your highest good uh saint john's wort is really good to ward that off um, when people talk about getting rid of, oh, there was a spirit and I saw something move and I saw a shadow figure or, you know, those types of things. A lot of times children see things. Ch children are very open. They haven't learned quite yet things about spirit that we know. And spirit is really drawn to children just because they're so open, um, but um, one of the things that I like to remind people is, you know, spirit doesn't communicate typically the way that humans, a live human, communicates. And sometimes if you ever watched uh, Ghost, <laughs> right? If you ever watch the, the with uh, Patrick Swayze and Whoopi Goldberg, um, you know how much energy it took. It took an incredible amount of energy for him to move something. An incredible amount of energy. So, um, and here's the other thing: if <clears throat> had she just been completely afraid and paranoid and something flew off the wall and it was him that was doing it and he was just trying to get her attention because again they don't communicate the way that we communicate and she banished him she set up wards and all of that stuff she never would have had um you know she never would have had the information that she got from him she never would have been able to feel his presence anymore so a lot of times those energies that you think is negative that you think is bad because a, a book fell off the shelf or you saw a shadow figure that could be a deceased uh relative a deceased ancestor it could be it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody in your of your dna it could just be a guardian that has taken a liking to you and they want you to know that they are there that they've got your back and they're actually there to protect you so you have to be careful because i would be i would be devastated if i um banished away my grandmother my aunt <laughs> you know my mom's uh, their communication, I mean, it would be terrible. So, um, especially my, well, not especially, but my aunt, it, you know, is very, um, I think her and I were both on the same, both on the same path. And I think she has a lot to offer. So I spend a lot of time in my journey work trying to connect with her. All right, the next thing I'm going to add is lemon peel. Now, you can use lemon juice get a full lemon cut it in quarters squeeze the lemon juice into your water and then drop the lemon peel in there after it the lemon juice acts like a you know it's sour so it's really good for banishing and removing and you know giving them a, a taste of sour and it smells good it does smell really good 
but um, I didn't have a lemon today, but I'm going to use lemon peel. The problem with the lemon, the lemon juice is um, it tends to sour quicker than some of the other herbs. And on that subject, I want to mention that I do keep my washes in the refrigerator because they last longer. Um, that's just my opinion. So anyway, I'm using uh, the lemon peel because um, not only is it good for, you know, that taste of sour and all of that, it is really good for purification as well. Um, and it's also, also really, really good for, I'm going to add just a little bit more. Um, that one pinch was really small. It's really, really good for clarity, to bring clarity. Why do you have so much negative energy in your house that you're calling negative energy? Why is there so much chaos? Um, you know, just... Uh, you have to think about these things because maybe that, and that's why I like to use the road opener because it may not be a spirit. It may not be, um, you know, what you think it is. You need the clarity to figure out what it is if you're actually going to end up removing it. Now, I'm not going to use this. Um, this is camphor. Sorry. This is camphor. Some people like to use camphor in their washes. This particular one, I'm not going to, but camphor is really good for the same thing. Removing, uh, cleansing, all of the things that we're talking about. I'm going to also add um, a couple of pinches. Of, this is a blend. It's already blended. This is sage, which we know. It's cedar which a lot of people after they sage when you sage your house have you ever thought about going back through with a stick of um cedar because cedar brings in goodness it brings in happiness it brings in uh all the good things and uh you know it, it helps with that whole process so this is um sage this is cedar, and it does have some lavender, but it doesn't have enough lavender for me. So I'm adding another three pinches of lavender because I'm not all about just removing. I also want to, I don't want to just remove. I want to have a calm. I want to bring, especially for this person, I want to bring a calming that there needs to be a calm, not just a removal of, but an energy of calm. Oh my gosh, you guys, I might eat this. It smells so good. Mm, that lavender really does it. it. Smells good. Okay. And then because salt, <laughs> um, this is uh, just sea salt. I'm adding one. One pinch of sea salt. I don't like to use a lot of salt in my washes because sometimes it leaves a white crusty. Even though you've mixed it, it might leave a white crusty outer ring on if you don't get your uh, area completely dry. But one pinch of salt just in case. We don't want any outside influences coming in. And then okay then florida water orange blossom rose water these are the colognes remember these are the colognes but i call them waters uh also the tobacco now if i was doing something for love i wanted to bring love into the home i would most likely add my rose water Okay, or if I just wanted to have like a house blessing and just a really good, uh, you know, um, I don't know, motivation, creativity kind of flow going on, I might use orange blossom. And this is wonderful. It smells so good. Um, 
to cleanse away, to cleanse away, I'm going to use the Florida water. One, two, three, three globs. That's how I measure globs. Uh, tobacco, you know, I would use tobacco in my sacred space, in my devotional area. Because as you know, I use tobacco for the ancestors. So if I'm trying to do a, um, you know, a, a some sort of divination or journey work or whatever, um, I might wipe down with the um, with the tobacco. All right. So I'm going to let that just simmer for a minute while we keep talking. This was the cedar. This is a cedar stick, smudge stick. And so again, you could if you if you were just doing all your herbs but you want to bring something good back in, you can go through the house and burn your cedar. But like I said, some people can't. They can't burn or do any kind of thing like that. That's all right. You want to make sure when you do this that, uh, you know, the children and the pets and anyone who might think this is a good smelling soup and uh, <laughs> they want to taste it, you might want to make sure that, uh, that they don't. You can always add, that's all the herbs, that's everything that I'm adding to this. The other thing that you could add could be uh, cinnamon maybe. Um, like you could add cinnamon sticks because that speeds up things. Uh, pine needles because pine, we use pine for cleansing. Uh, we know that. Um, let's see, I'm trying to see how much time we've got. Hang on one second, I'm going to list you up. Hello. Uh, Oh, we don't spill it. All right. Okay, going back down. So there it is, right? Okay. Now, typically, you're going to let that simmer for about a good, say, 10, 15 minutes. You really want to infuse that water with all the herbs, the oils from the herbs. Now, if you noticed, I didn't add any, any essential oils to it. The reason why is if you have a laminate floor or, you know, something like that, oil on a laminate floor is slippery <laughs> so you just be careful if you're going to add an oil just add maybe a drop of oil that's really all you need all right so i've unplugged this there's no on or off button um it's a plug so um okay let me move some stuff here so i have some room all right then so like like I said, typically you're going to let that simmer, all right, for about 10 minutes. We don't have 10 minutes. I'm going to move that this over here. This whole thing, it's not the best. It's hot, so you have to really be careful. All right, here's my pot. So now what I'm going to do, this is still hot. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> You're going to want to simmer it for about 10, 15 minutes, okay? All right. Okay, once it's cooled, once it is cooled, you need a strainer and you need something to strain it into. I have this nice old uh, big giant um, measuring cup and my little strainer fits right into it. 
So I'm going to give my pot one more stir. And then you're going to pour it in to your bowl or your container that's able to hold everything. See all the herbs in the bottom? All right. Now, this is what it looks like. Smells good. Kind of dirty. So then, or it looks dirty. So this is how, this is what I do. I have these little um, Muslim, uh, Muslim, um, whatever, uh, tea bags has the string on it. I put that in here. Oops. Got to have your ring open. Tighten it down on that string. My funnel goes into that tea bag. And then I take my mix and I'm going to strain it again. Do a little bit slower. Let's put that much in for now. On my tea bag. Cut most of it. Put my lid back in. Remember, this is cool. This is not cool right now. You should wait until it's been cooled. There you go cleaner. This is a cleanser. And so what I would do is then I would label. I will label this because this is for someone. So I'm way down here. Um, so what I'm going to do, it, this is a really high table. Um, I need to get a different chair. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this. It is for protection and to get rid of negativity. Uh, I will let this cool. I'm going to take the top off so that it can cool. And um, in fact, I might put it back in the pot. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it back in the pot where the other herbs were and, um, and let it steep for a while. And then um, I'll go through the process once it's cool since it is for somebody. So what you want to do then at that point is now that you have your cleaner, I start with my cabinets, like I said, and what I do is remember the, the La Bamba. I take a, um, I don't know where my rag went. Here it is. It's on the floor. All right. Well, anyway, I take a clean rag after I have dusted, after I have dusted my cabinet, that includes the, the doors, the sides, everything. I have my mixture of the water with the La Bamba. I lightly spray, lightly, I just lightly spray my cloth and I, I dust. So I'm cleaning. I dust my cabinet, the top, clean it off. Once it's clean, then I will take what I've done here. I've already made it. This is um, distilled water 
and um, oil, I'll put, depends on how strong I want. This has sandalwood, and you know, oil and water doesn't mix. Um, this is a rather large bottle. I typically don't use this big, but I had run out of my little ones. So usually I put them in here. A little bit of distilled water, well, probably whatever. And then I take the oils that I want to use and I'll put a few drops in there, shake it up, and again, this I will mist on my cabinets. You can mist your towel and I wipe it down. The other thing that I do, and especially on my more, um, my witchy things, my more sacred things, things that I'm really doing a cleansing on, I literally will take my uh, oil bottle that has the little um, squeezy thing, the dropper, a squeezy thing, the dropper, and I will drop, 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 drop a few oils right onto my wood top. Take my dry towel, dry towel, not with the La Bamba and the water on it. Take my dry towel and cleanse my, whether it's my altar, whether it's the bookcase, whether it's the TV stand, whatever it is, it's like dusting. You know, it, it's, it, it conditions the wood so it doesn't hurt the wood and it seeps in. It smells really good. I, I will caution you, depending on the kind of furniture you have, you might want to the mist on a towel first because sometimes if you put a drop on your your wood and it's real dried out and it really is in desperate need of conditioning it will leave a little oil spot on it where you've dropped that oil so you want to make sure that you're able to disperse it properly so uh, you can do it again drop it right on there um, like my altar is is it's great. It's already got oil spills and everything else on it. So I don't really care too much. Um, so sometimes I will just drop the oils on there. And sometimes I just use my mister. And uh, I just spritz it. And, you know, it's a spiritual thing while you're cleansing. What are, what are you doing? You know, I'm cleansing. I'm removing any kind of toxic energy any energy that's heavy any energy that just isn't serving the highest good or especially around my my magical area um which i do cleanse you know so when i'm done doing a spell work or something i always cleanse and then i cleanse before i do the next spell so uh, because i want to make sure you know if i'm doing a love spell <laughs> and then right afterwards i'm coming in with a ward spell um, I don't want those energies mixed, so I do um, I do cleanse before and after, before and after, because I don't, again, I don't want that energy hanging around either, um, so I cleanse before and after. Gosh, this was long. I didn't mean for it to be this long. Um, oh, 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 so the other thing is when you sweep, like when you're ready to do your cleansing, and you can do it just when you're cleaning too, it doesn't matter. But when you, especially when you're doing your cleansing, start with the back part of your house or the back part of your room, and this is after you've dusted, and sweep it forward towards your door, towards a door. If there's no door in that room, sometimes people will sweep out that room and go like down a hall, and if you can, if you can, it's, it's um, best to do it that way. If you can't, you got to do what you got to do. Get it out of there. Do a good cleansing and um, all will be well. I think that's everything. Hope you guys liked it. Again, make sure that your um, herbs have time to really absorb that oil. So I am definitely going to put this back in. And this is not spell work. So I mean, it is kind of, but eh, 
Um, I'm going to put this back in there. I want it to really absorb the oils. I'll probably put it back on the heater, um, you know, for another couple minutes, heat it up again, and um, and then I'll, I'll strain it again, and it'll be ready to go. If you have, I know, I keep saying if, if, if. If you have, be careful. See how dark that is? It can stain. So if you have a tile floor with a, with a grout, like, like a light colored grout, it can stain that. If you have a light colored wood floor, be careful, it can stain. If you've got a, like one of those fiberglass tub thing, tubs, showers, tubs, it can stain it. So that is the downfall. The good part is you don't have to make the wash if you use distilled water and just put some oils in it. Then it's not, uh, but you, you just be careful because if you put too much, it'll be slippery. All right. I think I finished it. I think I covered everything. Um, I did. I think I really, I, I think that I did. So, uh, okay. Well, anyway, I hope that you liked it. I'm sorry that it was so long. Um, that's it. <laughs> See you next time. Bye guys. Remember you can use it for any intention. Research the herbs that you need for that particular intention. Love, use all the love. Okay. Wash your thresholds. You can do your window seals. Okay, bye. I got to go. Bye.